Hey guys, Talent Scout back with another video here. And today's topic I would like to be discussing the Apple Card. So for those that don't know, a little bit of background. So a few months ago, Apple announced that in collaboration with Goldman Sachs, they'd be announcing and releasing their first uh, consumer financial products known as the on-brand Apple Card. So in typical Apple fashion, of course it's a beautiful laser-cut titanium card because, well, studies show that millennials love metal cards. And just to be frank, those studies are very accurate. So. It's not the best credit card out there, it's not the worst. Here are the benefits. So you get 3% back on all purchases through the Apple Store and the App Store. So say like you're on Apple Music, you buy something from the App Store, uh, I'm assuming your iCloud, you know, things of that nature. You get 2% back on every Apple Pay purchase and 1% back on everything else. So nothing crazy. You get the prestige of a metal card, it looks really cool, but it's pretty meh in the credit card tier. So here's a little bit strange and why I have some mixed feelings. Uh, Apple and in turn Goldman Sachs are dipping into what's known as subprime lending. So for an extremely basic definition, subprime lending is giving out credit to anyone with a lower than average credit score. Just think 660 or below giving out credit. So credit score is a metric just to determine your credit worthiness by these credit issuers. So the lower your credit score, the more risky you are seen by these lenders. The thing is, um, Apple has been approving people for semi-large limits with lower than average credit scores. From my opinion, that seems a little counterintuitive because if someone has a lower credit score, they're more than likely unable to handle a higher credit limit. So are you just setting them up for failure? Kind of disclaimer. The example I'm about to give is a little hyperbolic, but it's the best explanation that I can think of off the top of my head. So remember back in 2008, that huge housing crisis? Well, how did we get there? Banks were also participating in what's called subprime lending. As long as you had five bucks and a heartbeat, you could have a mortgage for about $400,000. So this is way smaller scale, but it's still a very questionable business practice. So there's a lot of reports online. You can Google it. I'll be sure to link a few in the description below. Um, few reports of people that are being approved with these really low credit scores. I've also seen it happen in person for people that I know that have been able to be approved for a 3000 limit with a, I think it was a 604 credit score, which is, it's definitely in the poor range, but they were still accepted for a pretty high limit relative to what they have right now. To be completely upfront, I did recommend my friend do this for a very specific reason. I know, I just said how bad it is, but I recommended a friend to do it. So either I'm a shady individual or I thought of a really good idea that could potentially help them out. I'll let you be the judge of that. So here, I'll outline my idea with a little preface of how credit scores work. So the three main components of your credit score is your utilization ratio. So what that means is how much credit you have available versus how much credit you are actually using. The second thing is your payment history. Do you make payments every month and don't miss payments? Very straightforward. If you make your payments, you're seen as good. If you miss a few, you're kind of messed up for quite a while. So contrary to popular belief, the more lines of credit you have, the better. At first thought you'd believe, okay, if I keep opening up credit, the banks will think that I need this credit, blah, 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 I'm risky. It's actually the exact opposite. The more credit that you have and don't use, for some reason they see it as a, oh, this person has restraint, so here, have some more credit. I currently have, I think, 12 accounts, and I'm sitting pretty well in the mid 700s. It, I know it's strange, but yeah, more credit cards, the better. So here's the idea. So my buddy, in their particular case, a huge factor of why their credit was subprime is because their utilization level was extremely high. So after I'd read those articles and saw that Apple was approving people with lower credit scores, I was like, wait a second, if you're approved for more credit, so yeah, say you're still here, what you're using is what you have available, but if you're approved, it automatically goes to here. So therefore, effectively lowering your utilization ratio. Now, they'll obviously have to pay off the rest to get it to where it belongs. 10% or below is ideal. Let's keep it at zero, because honestly, carrying a balance, it's, it's pretty risky. Don't mess up. I have carried a balance before on accident, forgot, don't do it. So yeah, so by being approved, it lowers the utilization ratio. But this can also be effective and helpful in other scenarios. Say your payment history lies around 80%. If you keep paying on, say, one account over and over, trying to get it up to the ideal 99 percentile, 
that'll take forever because you only have one payment per month adding to you know like the the ratio but if you add another account you'll get to have an opportunity to start fresh you can get a hundred percent on this account and it will average the payment history of both of them together so effectively rising your payment history a lot faster than just keeping your old accounts and thing number three and thing number three you'll have an additional credit account on your profile so you will have a small drop from having a hard inquiry a hard inquiry is just you applied for credit it will cause a small drop that only lasts for about two months but the benefit of having an additional account far outweighs the small drop you have in the short term so if you fall into any of those three categories applying for the apple credit card can actually boost your credit in the mid to long term so something to think about so that being said apple has the best credit rebuilder card on the market right now it's not supposed to be compared to your chase sapphire reserve or your amex platinum some people make the mistake since it's a metal card like oh it's in that same category no pretty decent rewards for a credit rebuilder card because usually you have to get something like a, a secured card which has no rewards at all this has some benefit so even though apple is being extremely scummy and targeting people that will most likely not be able to pay the debt back and strategically releasing it right around the iphone release cycle <laughs> no accident there if people decide they want to rebuild their credit and want to exercise some self-control a little bit of discipline apple actually has presented a great opportunity to rebuild your credit your credit really matters more than you think it does if you want to rent a nice place they're going to check your credit score and make sure you have a decent credit history if you want to buy a new car and if you don't want to pay something ridiculous like an 18 percent apr on like twenty thousand dollars having a good credit score really really matters so it's beyond just things like buying a house please 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 protect and rebuild your credit please use the information that i provided responsibly i like like for real though i'd be feeling guilty so i don't want to know i enable people to be self-destructive so please only apply for this card and do this if one you already have good credit and just do what you want because you're already doing a pretty good job but if you don't have good credit only apply for more credit if you're going to use it to repair it don't get this card and buy the new iphone at the time of this recording it literally comes out tomorrow so so please just just don't do it i mean i'm probably gonna max it out and buy the mac pro which i don't need yeah so um, i'll catch you the next one hopefully soon this time <laughs> peace